before you add one of these to your family. Pay close attention to this video because I'm going to share the top things I wish I had known before I adopted a golden doodle. So let's just jump into this video right the now. The first thing to consider before you bring a golden doodle into your family is that golden doodles and labradoodles are not, and this is going to leave you shook, are not actually hypoallergenic. Now hear me <laughs> out. <laughs> just make yourself comfortable, Finn. Awesome. Too many people fall into the myth that all golden doodles and all labradoodles are in fact hypoallergenic. And while that may be true in some rare situations, here's the reality. While some dogs do in fact produce fewer allergens than others, all dogs have allergens. It resides in their skin, their dead skin cells, their saliva, and even their urine. So no dog is actually fully hypoallergenic. And on top of that, if you have never had a doodle in your life, many of them have coats that attract everything. Yes, Finn. He's like, yep, I get it. I'm owning up to it. And what I mean by that is leaves and grass and ragweed and dirt. <laughs> When they come inside, I know Finn's like, I'm so sorry, I don't mean it. I don't blame you, buddy. But when they come, <laughs> when they come inside, they're bringing that in doors. So it's really important to realize that if you're adopting a doodle just because they're hypoallergenic, you may want to reconsider that. Now on to the next thing you want to consider before bringing in one of these goofy dudes. And if it's not been made clear yet, I love my dude Finn like no other. He is my best friend. And while these things are what you should consider before adopting them, this is just to help you prepare it because not every dog is great for every person. Now on to the next thing to consider before you bring one of these floofy dudes into your home and that is doodles are little rebels because they are so damn cute and they know it they get away with so much more than they should and that's really on me as the owner i mean look at him he's like a floof marshmallow running around with a pillow that he really should not be chewing on and i just can't i just want to take pictures but i need to take it away from him and give him something he can chew on instead i have found that sometimes finn will get into something that he shouldn't or he'll be chewing on something he shouldn't and sometimes he just looks so goofy and so cute that I'll laugh instead of positively redirecting him. And of course that's on me, but that's something to consider. They are cute, but you still need to keep them on structure and routine. I have tons of playlists down below on how to train your golden doodles and special tips. They can be some of the most expensive dogs to have. And I don't just mean the price tag to purchase one, but you guys know if you're watching this, I'm a big advocate of rescuing. But once you have a doodle, you learn of all these awesome and incredible things that you feel like you cannot live without from premium awesome pet food to special collars and bandanas. Getting a dude, you're basically required to get them a cute bandana. Awesome toys, soft toys, toys that make noise. There's just so many fun things that you can buy for your dude. And I'm not saying you need to do those things, but it becomes a temptation and that temptation struggle is real. I even remember when I adopted Finn, I wanted to take even better photos and video of him. So I bought a better camera and that was expensive. Doodles love their humans, case in point. He is my Velcro dog. And why this is important to consider is you need to ask yourself, what is your schedule? Because if I was at a job that kept me away from my home eight, 10, 12 hours a day every weekday, and I wasn't able to come home a couple times during the day, like let's say for a break or lunch, my dude would not be a happy dog. Now, if you do work long hours or at your school all day and you still really, really want a dude, here's what you can do to help make this a little bit better on your dog. And that is you're going to have to find a trusted person. Maybe that's a friend. Maybe it's a family. Maybe it's a dog walker that you pay for. Remember we said earlier, dudes can be expensive. This is another example of that and have those people come and let your dude out every three to five hours at least. Now, the next thing I want you to consider is dudes are smart. You are going to need to keep them engaged in training with them and working on basic obedience. And I have tons of links right here on ways that you can do that. Because they're so smart, you're gonna need to stay up on your studies and or your personal development because your dude will outsmart you if you don't keep up. And this is an amazing advantage because your dude is so damn smart. There's so much you can teach them and so much you can do with them. They're so eager to learn. So definitely take the time to work with them. And while they're 
fun, loving, and incredible dogs I could not imagine not having in my life. They need to be stimulated mentally. If you want some brain games, click the video linked up here and I have tons of playlists down below to help you entertain, enrich, and train your dude at home. <laughs> Doodles love to play, which means you better expect to expend a lot more energy with a dude because you're gonna need to play with them, which this is an awesome thing because who doesn't need more exercise and activity in their life? So you'll need to make sure that you have a variety of toys for your dude that you give one at a time under supervision. And while this is not the case for all, many dudes can be loyal, affectionate, and super snuggly, cuddly puppies. In fact, I remember Finn, when we first adopted him from the rescue, when he was about four or four and a half months old, he wasn't a super cuddly dog. And I really thought that he would never grow up and learn to snuggle, but lo and behold, he grew into it and he loves being my lap dog. Here's the benefit. They are going to be a constant source of comedic relief. I'm telling you guys, like I do not stop laughing. Every single day, this dude makes me laugh. They just have a the goofy, floofy demeanor. And because doodles typically require more maintenance than some other breeds, specifically with regard to their coat and just keeping them mat free, it means that you're gonna be spending a lot more time with your dude. So that's not a bad thing by any means. This dog is gonna give you lots and lots of reasons to be with them and enjoy with them and work with them. And that's an incredible thing as Finn walks away. <laughs> now, one thing that I didn't really consider before I adopted my Golden Doodle was the community and the friends that I would make. Golden Doodle and Labradoodle or any Doodle humans are incredible humans, at least in my experience. And the community that I have built just on having my dude in my life has been life-changing. There's Facebook groups, there's Instagram groups. I'm obviously on this YouTube channel. I've met so many of you. So be prepared. If you're an introvert like me, if any time you're out walking your dude, you better expect somebody to comment on how awesome your dog is because I know you're working with them or how cute they are or to comment that they also have a dude and to strike up conversation. We'll obviously do everything safely, but be prepared to make new okay, friends. Okay guys, with this next one, stick with me because while it may sound doom and gloom, it is something you need to be aware of and it is my intention to not scare and worry you, but to help educate you so that you can make the best decisions for your dude. But two breeds that are most likely and more likely to develop cancer in general are Labradors and Golden Retrievers. And obviously, as many of you know, many doodles are bred with one of these two types of dogs. And so I share this again, not to alert you, but to remind you that in my opinion, a healthy diet for dogs is absolutely critical for long-term Health. High carb diets are known to fuel cancer cells because cancer cells actually thrive in the presence of sugar and carbs convert into sugar. And all kibble, regardless of the brand of dry food, is packed full of carbs. It is how it stays shelf stable. I am an advocate of feeding a raw, fresh food diet to dogs. My dude eats a pre-made, complete and balanced raw dog food, which is composed of raw meat, raw organ, and raw crushed bone. This is the most biologically appropriate diet for him. It is very low in carbs, so I don't have to worry as much about health concerns. And you can find a raw fresh food diet at your local independent pet store in the freezer section. I also have more videos on this link down below. I want to see your dudes. Upload a picture of your dude on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, here in the YouTube community tab and tag me at Rachel Fasaro. It would make my day. This next golden doodle fact is well known by every doodle owner in the world, or at least most of them, especially if you have a light colored dude like I do, you better expect a constant dirty beard. Not all of them, I shouldn't say all of them, but most of them typically get these dirty beards that I, on a daily basis, will go through and with the dry towel, dry off his beard because he loves to dig his face into the dirt, play in the water, Bowl and just be a silly, goofy dog. It's just a part of life and keeping it clean is obviously a great thing to do. And be part of this community by clicking that subscribe button and turning on the notification bell. If you guys have questions, now this is important. If you have a question, comment that down below or connect with me on Instagram. I am loving the questions you guys are sending me and whatever I can do to provide value, I wanna do. And if you want to see what I feed my golden doodle and the best diet I believe for golden doodles are, click the video linked right here and I hope you have a beautiful day. Goodbye.